Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our third webinar hosted by Chopin Technologies. Just to remind you, Chopin Technologies is one of the eight companies brands that make up the Kipman Analytics holding group. And the aim of today's webinar series is to share with millers and the bakers and actually with all people who are interested and involved in the grain industry sector, a certain case, knowledge, experience, when thinking about the quality control by working with their flour and the dough. So because, before go, getting to the heart of the matter, I will give you some practical information about this webinar. First of all, my name is Hanna Zhugunova. I'm a food and application specialist in Chopin Technologies. And on behalf of the team of Chopin Technologies, I will be your speaker for today's webinar. So today we'll talk about uh, a lot of things, and especially about the whole wheat flour as a new global trend. And we'll provide the complete solution to analyze whole wheat flowers, and especially to control it. And this presentation will last around 40 minutes. So in the end, if you will have the questions, of course, you can ask it. You can use the question and answer section during the presentation. If I will have not enough time today to answer all your questions, me or my colleagues will contact you by email that you provide during your registration. And one final point, this webinar will be recorded. So you will soon have uh, the uh, link uh, to access to today's recording session. So you can revisit, uh, you can see the missed and interesting details in more detail. Let's start. Without our uh, past, we cannot talk about the future. So let's talk about the history about the whole wheat flour. And I think it begins a lot of time ago. While whole wheat flour was first used by ancient Egyptians uh, to make a uh, kind of loaves of the bread. So it was a, uh, cultivated like a domestic crop. People ground wheat between their two boulders to create a meal and uh, they could uh, bake it bread into the first communities. In the late Middle Age, everything changed. The pursuit of their whiteness of the flower began. However, there is the fact that their whiteness, we're talking not about their whiteness of the flower, but especially the whiteness of the grain itself. So here they started the division also of their social wear called the distinct class association. So when with the most, their well-off rich people get put the whitest bread. So the, the urban studies actually it's defined as qualities of the bread. It's white, part white and dark. In practice for a very long time, even white bread would have appreciated like a whole wheat bread into modern consumer partially because their sifting and bolting system was unknown. But in the second part half of the 19th century, there were great changes in the flour milling process. That time Europeans began to use roller mills, which produced much whiter flour. And then the American creator Edmund improved the process with the purified, actually to separate the middlings, it's uh, bran, germ, and other coarse particles. Actually from the particles of the, uh, of exactly of the bread. But when we started this pursuit of uh, the whitest flour, the more flour become the whiter, the more artificial the bread became, which means without all the possible beneficial of the micro and micro elements actually or that we were extracted before. But it was until the 19th century that nutritionists began to challenge the idea if the whiter meaning better. And they found that the great resistant idea that the whole bread actually is better for you. So the point of this history is that we had a flower that was good, was good for the house during the ancient times, and then we are modern it. And now 
it also was depends actually on different factors. It was depends on their social, historical, as well the health factor. But now the people started to ask the question, and they started to become the confident that the white wheat, uh, wheat flour is much more better for the house. So as we started talking about their COVID flour, what about their benefits? Of course, first of all, it consists the higher content of the fibers, because actually it preserves all particles such as bran, germ, and cores. It also has the high content of minerals and micronutrients, and all these peculiarities influences on the human health. There is a lot of things. It protects instantal health. Whole wheat flour is a nutrient that accelerates metabolism with the aspect that the instant stones is working better. It's strengthening the immune system because it contains a lot of B vitamins, folate, zinc, iron. It reduces diabetes risk. It controls sugars. It provides toughness for a lot of time because thanks to a dietary fiber that inside, because you are, you're getting, if you're a person getting hunger, then you can eat less by including the whole wheat flour bread. It also has influence on balancing the blood pressure, prevent heart diseases. Also whole wheat flour energy source, it contains, as I said, a lot of different B vitamins as also potassium, selenium, and others that actually are accumulate your energy needs. There is a lot of and a lot of things that talk about their advantages of the whole wheat flour. We can observe these all benefits of consuming it. And it causes the interest and enlarging of the market. So following the clipping from the market prediction, that source, this is whole wheat market prediction, we found that the consuming of the whole wheat flour claims expanding in 6.7% each year from 10, 2022 to 2032. That means that market is growing. That means that much more people are interested in, in whole wheat flour. And because of the all benefits that I, to I told about it before. And of course, all these leads are need to have one general understanding of what exactly the whole fl wheat flour is. For many years, the specialists and scientists have been looking for a generally accepted definition of whole green wheat. It was in order to provide homogenized global definition of the whole flour in order to give the clarity to the consumers and also to provide different recommendations for the nutrition for the health, also to provide different, uh, like how you need to label right correctly your product, what kind of specification for the whole grain and all existing rules and combination practices for whole grain. But actually there is no universally accepted definition. That means that this topic is open, kind of new, we know that whole wheat flour is becoming well known, but still this is the product in utilization. So as I said, there is no, uh, no statement, but we made in this research and it's some kind of well-known resources like Cereals Green Association, ISO Whole Grain Initiative. We found one statement that is repeating the same. So whole wheat flour, this is the flower, I would like to highlight this part, that contains all anatomical components, including the endosperm, germ, bran, that may, may be present in some relative proportions and the intact kernel. And there is still a lot of to figure out. One more time, there is no instruction of how to make or how to use the whole wheat flour as a part of the production mode and the physical characteristic, brand particle size, small, big, and etc. moisture content. So we don't have it. And also there is unknown neurological and technological quality. That means that everybody make the whole wheat flour differently. And they seem it's right. 
that actually cause a very big diversity of the flower from one miller to another, from one baker to another, from one production to another, and of course, from one country to another. As I mentioned in this slide picture, if I had three flowers, for example, is France, Germany, and Spain flower, the whole wheat flower, that we can see that has different characteristics. First of all, that has different protein content. Second one, it has different granulometry. And the third one, there is different rheological quality. But what it tell us, this is the same whole wheat flower. Yes, it's different, but all all this is a whole wheat flower. Consequently, all of this creates a big opportunity because the market, as I said, is growing. And this also the big challenge to the entire industry. Challenge of the different level of the sectors. In the part is Miller, because actually what happened, um, the um, whole wheat flower you, you have a lot of lipolytic um, enzymes. Actually, that they are in Christ, the rinse of the flower, and they lead to the short term of their shelf life. The second one, there is actually, there is no rule of the tempering step. As we know, the tempering step was made in order to facilitate separation of the bran from the sperm. But when we don't have this step, when we are leaving everything inside, we don't need it step. But somebody is still using it, somebody not. And uh, so we have different various preparation in industry. And it's great different variability of whole wheat flour of the products. That actually we don't know yet. We have different quality, we have different impact, and especially in rheology. And we are actually faced with their higher quantity of the fibers, that meaning the high water absorption, that meaning uh, impact of gluten development, also impact of the characteristics of the final product. And this is meaning the big challenge for the baker. Nonetheless, all of this, it will impact and will have strong impact on organoleptic characteristic of the whole, of the whole wheat flour bakery products. So that means that as a consumer, that less like the consumer, he wants to buy the constant product and constant quality from time to time without any changes. Telling in one word, their consumer want to get the same whole wheat bread that he or she bought yesterday. As a result, we saw a big variability of whole wheat flour. First of all, there is a variability of the flour quality, and this is the case even for the white flour. In spite of this, also there is a challenge in the production that actually are, is not reinforced with the rule. Millers do they, as they feel, the bakers do as they could, but there is always the need of the consumer of consuming this stable product. And all this highlights and force the strong and important need of the miller and baker to anticipate what can happen with this product for their quality. So the question is, we need to have, have kind of specifications generally, this granulometry, humidity, baking trials, protein content. But the question is, is it still enough? As for this reason, we need to add other parameters, for example, like rheological properties that need to be included. But what isn't the case? What we can tell in the case, of course, for So as I said, until now, when we are proposing you are a complete new solution for whole wheat flour quality control. That actually are based on three devices, Alveolab, Mixolab and RIA4. So as I said, their mastering of the entire baking process is very complicated. So we need to actually anticipate what's happening in the stage of the process. We need to know how to do that. So we're starting from their mixing process after shaping, resting, proofing, and in the end, it's baking. 
And these are actually how we're relating their devices. The mixer lab for mixing, this and actually are uh, for the baking and um, algal lab for shaping and resting and real for proofing. And uh, of course, it can be uh, approached in another way and algal lab can we analyze with the each step, but this is the one simple approach that we are proposing to you. And this is how we find the better solution to control the whole wheat flowers quality. So let's dive into each part of the process in detail and discuss with you the best control solution. And we'll start with the mixer lab to control mixing and baking behaviors. So the mixer lab, beside of the different of certain years, we created their equipment that helped to predict the behavior during the production process. It helped to find the water absorption capacity that indicates the quantity of the water that will be possible to produce from a given quantity of the flour. The behavior during the kneading that helps to ensure that material actually is comfortable with the industrial process. Then we are measuring the resistance of the mixing in order to predict the volume into the process. The changing of the viscosity of the dough at the temperature uh, increase, we relate with the structure indication of the finished product and the viscosity and stability at uh, 90 degrees will help us to get information about the melasic conductivity that has direct impact on the color. And the, finally, the cooling phase will indicate the starch uh, retrogradation that has direct impact on the shelf life. Or preservation. So after we we know a lot of bit uh, about the uh, mix lab actually after following our other series that we made already, but after we have the questions when we started to research about the application, do we need to use the standard protocol or a customized protocol? And as the results showed that actually we need to go with their customized protocol. Why? Because the standard protocol, Chopin Plus, was mainly used for the white flowers. So in this case, the whole wheat flowers, the, uh, actually the modification was necessary. And modification was that we increase our mixing speed until 200 RPM. That helped us to give the much more information of the dough. Because you can see on the graph, by increasing the speed of the mixing, they help us better to understand their development time in order to differentiate the flower. Because the development time of the whole wheat flower is much more longer. So, and uh, the, actually the fibers content, we, uh, because of the fibers content, that's why it's longer. And, um, actually uh, we don't see there this development uh, only um, after the heating. So that's why we increase the speed of the mixing that help us to see this development. So it was not 9.40 like it was with Japan Plus protocol, but with their customized protocol, with the 200 RPM, we got the development time 5.25 minutes. So this is message that it, we are, it's better to adapt this kind of application this way. It doesn't seem like that, but it was the protocol with a very fruitful and long-term collaboration between the wheat marketing center and Chopin Technologies. So the many combination was tested, like five different temperature zones, adapted irritation protocol, the doorway, the mixing speed. But the better way to find the right settings were defined later, as I already said, this is by using their 200 RPM that helped us to see better the water absorption effect of the mixing, especially the development time, stability, and other parameters. Also, the wheat marketing center, they conducted the test to develop this protocol, and we validate these tests in Japan Technologies. So today I will take this opportunity on behalf of our team to thank to Jane Bok and Ling Jui Deng for that work to, together with us to develop this new protocol. Thank you so much. 
So we'll go further about, we'll talk about their validation of the protocol. We will do this protocol with 19 whole wheat flowers that come from the five different countries and they were analyzed in the duplicates. It actually gives us the necessary possibility to validate this protocol. And we see, can see clearly the importance during the mixing, heating, and cooling. And one thing to confirm that you can see the variations of the process and how we need to anticipate in order to predict and control it. What is important to highlight in this slide, I would like uh, to highlight, for example, can you imagine this sample of the flower, of whole wheat flower in yellow and the blue? How they're different? I don't know about their region. And of course, we will have different final product. And this is crucial. We need to control it and predict it before we are making our pet. So thanks to a small adjustment of the protocol, thanks to Mixilla, we can perfectly use it to analyze the whole wheat flower. Now we'll come to uh, the following stage, the stage to control shaping and resting that we propose to control with the alveolar. Just a small reminder with that alveograph. Alveograph, this is the equipment that measures the wheat flower neurological uh, characteristics like tenacity, accessibility, elasticity, and baking strings. Actually, by measuring properties, the bubble of the dough, it was inflated. So during their going with the alveo, alveo lab, we said, we have a lot of challenges to solve. We faced a lot of challenges. We found that alveo with the standard protocol cannot be used and it's not working. Why? Because this is due to their high water absorption. This is due to long development time. This is due to increased fragility when we are inflating the bubble. And as we can see, the very really high P and low L, L sorry. So it's very, we have low discrimination. So we started to work. We started to search to make a research and development. So we tested many different protocols with the different parameters you can see in the slide, with different water absorption, mixing speed, mixing temperature, mixing time, a lot of. And in order to overcome these difficulties, we got the perfect combination that is works with whole wheat flour. After we got it, we started to validate this protocol with a wide variety of the flowers by different uh, operators on different instruments. We made development of specific algorithm and software to meet the technical challenges posed by whole wheat flowers. We had the problem, as I said already, with to detect of L parameter. And after we made the extensive validation test of this new software. And here we are, thanks to research and development of the team, we got this possibility and we propose the new solution, dedicated alveolar protocol. Actually, this protocol, with this protocol, we can analyze the whole with flowers. With the new changes, with the high water absorption, for example, the, here we have their standard protocol, here we have whole with, with protocol, we are increase the high water absorption, we increase uh, uh, the kneading speed into 80 RPM to ensure optimal development time of the gluten network, as actually I showed you in the mixer lab. And we are lower swelling rate. So we are making their, ensure that a smooth deformation of the bubble. So inflating much more slower, slowly the airflow. The important thing that I would like to mention that we had made a lot of research and of course, this protocol will be available in October this year. And you can, if you have Alveo Lab, of course, you can upgrade it. Uh, we'll provide also upgrade conditions from our team that will be communicated in their near future. But one more thing to mention, the whole 
floor protocol is not compatible with other versions like Alveon G and Alveon PC. It's only uh, in Alveon Lab. So let's go through the example. The first approach, uh, we, we got their test of the validation, the test of the ring test. We analyzed uh, six whole wheat flour samples. We tested their in duplicates on three different uh, equipment of the available lab and by three different uh, operator. One more time to repeat, you can see that we got that absolutely different behavior of the whole wheat flour. So let's take an example, blue, and uh, there is 40, for example, L. There is 40 for L, and here in yellow, there is around 130. There's two different behavior, there's two different flowers, but it stayed the whole wheat flower. So the important thing is to mention that is a reminder that I already made this exist, existing statement that we don't have there one definition one specification about the whole wheat flour. They're different. So we don't have the specification about the particle size. That's why we also have the different variability of the flour because the miller preparing uh, differently the flour. Also, what I want to mention that important thing that you need to understand, actually in this protocol, what we are doing, we are still uh, get the five bubbles. But sometimes we get and have one bubble that goes wrong. And of course, this is due to one particle, maybe much more bigger than another. And it is absolutely normal. That will lead that, that you will have sometimes the bubble that will behave not the same like the other. But we need to understand that it's whole wheat flour. We don't need to compare it with their white flour, with the white flour, especially standard protocol. Yes we will have different manipulation with the whole wheat flour. And yes, we will have atypical uh, the bubbles. And yes, of course, we will have different results. And this is normal. This is open to that we are propose you are the actual the possibility to test the whole wheat flour that was not available before. The, despite all of this analysis that we made, um, the Alveo lab shows the repeatable and reproducible results. The six tested samples are very clearly di uh, discriminated by each uh, operator. And the, so the feasibility of the analysis uh, was confirmed. So we'll go further with their example of the uh, very wide variability of the behaviors that we can observe in this slide. So it, we were tested 30 whole wheat flower samples from six different countries, from Spain, USA, Italy, Turkey, and Argentina. And as you can see, the variability is impressive. But the most important thing, what I want again to mention, now with Alveolab, we can characterize the main properties of the tool. And we can better select and anticipate the process impact. So we go further to the another stage of the proofing that we will control with the real four. And a small reminder, the bread volume is a very multifactorial answer. Why? Because the quality of the, um, of the bread depends not only the skill of the baker, but mainly on the consistency of the quality of the floor product. And actually on the general characteristics of the door during the fermentation, do, that will depend actually on the quality of the floor, the quality of the yeast and activity, the intensity of the dough kneading, and etc. But the capacity of the dough to rise depends on two main factors. So first, this is CO2 production, so possibility to produce the CO2, CO2 retention, possibility to retain the gas. That will depend first, gas production will depend on yeast, type, for example, damaged starch, sugars, enzymes. And CO2 retention will be mainly depends on the quality of gluten network. And all of this will have their strong impact on the dough raising and especially on the dough volume. 
And here we are, we have the rear four that will help us to control these aspects. The, as they are three main parameters, the gas retention, gas production, and the door development. So the rear four is specifies to analyze the development of the door during the fermentation. How it works, so the first we to analyze the door development, we have this special magnetic sensor that will be positioned on the top of the door and it will give the essential information about the door development. Actually, our, it's a direct impact uh, um, with their, um, how, at what time and actually optimal time to place uh, their door into their oven. Also, the re four will measure the gas production and gas retention. And the same, the, this will be on the same sample. So the re four will measure the pressure in the solid cylinder where it uh, placed the special solid system. And we will make uh, for the, the first step, we'll make uh, the measurement of their uh, gas production. And the second one by the cartridge will be measuring, measuring their gas of intention. So here we'll give you an example of the possibility to analyze the flowers. So we confirmed the different studies with the RIA4. Uh, here in this study, we got their uh, different uh, flower types from sample from T65, T18, T120, and one, uh, T150. With the, that, it's relating actually to the ash content. And we, uh, by analyzing the rear four, we got the kind of tendons, tendons over their lower development time with the increase of the ash content. So the re 4 explains the, uh, the, the particles of the brain that they are present in the flower, that actually are the dough is becoming much more quicker porous that it will impact on the volume of the dough. So we can see more uh, retention of the gas, gas production, but the, actually the gas production will be almost the same but the gas retention will be much more better. And that will absolutely have an impact on their uh, bread volume. So another example that really will give you the possibility to discriminate various whole wheat flowers. There is an example that we got the two types of the wheat of the two different milling processes industrial and artisanal process. And so we analyze the uh, four whole wheat flowers. And due to these results of the study, we saw that the milling process has more impact on the type of the wheat. How? So the flowers obtained with the artisanal milling process has much more impact on, their, uh, on the flowers that has uh, the uh, industrial product. So we can see that the samples actually that have the small particles have the much more door do development time that it, like door development were much more intense than the flowers with their bigger particles. So we are capable to discriminate their industrial pro process from the artisanal. From the, uh, the, 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 what I mean, industrial flower from their artisanal flower. And as I have said, because their industrial flower will have much more smaller particles, so it will have the faster development after that uh, actually are relating uh, especially of the granulometry. So we'll come to conclusion. What we have seen, actually, are I already mentioned that for now, the as whole wheat flour is becoming very popular, very interesting to understand what is that the kind of their product. The people started to enlarge the interest and also the market. 
And originally, uh, what we have, the all laboratory analyzers that are designed especially to analyze the wheat, white wheat flour. And uh, as we can see, we have a lot of different variabilities of the whole wheat flour because we don't have the specification exactly, the statement, what is that? And this will give you their difficulties during their baking and, and milling and also are especially to the producers. So thanks to kind of the more or less important modification of the protocols, now it's become possible to overcome the main challenges that we are faced with the whole wheat flour. Thanks to different equipment and different solution that we are propor proposing you today for the entire baking process. But let's go further. Of course, there is a lot of work need to be done. There is many implications that can be considered, the selection of the raw material, the control of the milling process, the designing the specification, specification especially for your producing, for your producer, for different millers, etc. Et and also the prediction and anticipation of the baking behavior. As I said, it's still a lot of work to do because we need to understand with what we are working in. We need to understand what this kind of the new material we need to have the links with the baking process. We, we need to test other whole wheat cereals, like spelt, oat, rice, the mixes between them. So I'm telling this why, because we're, if you're interested in a partnership, we'll be happy to get the partnership with you in order to go through, uh, through these challenges together. So message us if you have any idea. I would like to thank you for your attention, for, uh, for listening me clearly. And uh, I will go to the, through the part of the uh, question and answer session. So here, here, there we have the button when you can ask the question. So I will go directly to the question and answers and I will see if there is still some questions. Just one thing, if you are not ready to ask the question now or you will have the question after, don't hesitate to contact me, to contact actually us at sales.kpmanalysis.com uh, uh, and we will uh, contact you directly to answer. So, okay, I'll go to the question answers folder to see if there are some questions. Okay, I have their question from the uh, Del Rey. Sorry if I didn't <laughs> tell correctly your name. Can this equipment for characteristic whole wheat flour be adapted for other cereal flours? What does it, you mean by other cereal flours? If you meaning the whole wheat flours, yes, of course. We already proposed you the solution that you, you can use with this with our equipment in order to characterize the whole wheat flour. So give me a much more specification, please. You can. So I'll go through another question. Can you share the one slide with the best specification which you obtained while making these variations and modifications making the quality control? From Amfi Nazimuddin. So I will repeat one more thing. The whole wheat flour is something unknown and in the world we don't have this specification. For example, one kind of the whole wheat flour from Poland will be different from the whole wheat flour from Germany. It's meaning for which final product you want to use. Everything you are, will create your own specification by using your product, by taking your flour, analyzing on our equipment, and after getting your values in order to correlate with your final product. So I cannot tell you there the best specification to use because this is you that you will be analyzed by analyzing, we're giving you the solution that will help you to analyze and to find this best specification. Okay, so another question from City Ainul Mardia, sorry, <laughs> already tell not right. Um, hi, what types of oil you use for the whole wheat during the run alveolar? The same oil that we are using actually are with their standard protocol. The same, we didn't change anything. The procedure is exactly the same. 
but actually you will see you working during during the working with the whole wheat flour it's something different it's not the same like they are white wheat flour the you will, it will be different you will be uh, differently manipulated you will be differently use it so the procedure is uh, like manipulating is different but the procedure one procedure is resting the same except that we change the some settings parameters in order to get uh, the bubble well inflated and to get the results. Another question from the Delhi. Uh, ah, no, this is there actually uh, the uh, the continuing of the question that he asked before, when he asked that can this equipment for activities characterizing whole wheat flour be adapted for the other cereal flours? For example, as millet, millet rice, sorghum, perhaps also potato flour. I will tell you, let's test it together. Let's uh, make the partnership and we will make text together to see if it's working. But actually it's working. But we need to, as I said, we need to go to further. We're giving the solution. You can test it and we can see it together. So we're open for the partnership one more time. <laughs> Another question from whom I didn't know. If the modified protocol of 200 RPM repeatable regardless of variables on whole wheat flour, flour production with source milling process. Yes, it's absolutely repeatable and reproducible. This was our main point, to create something that we will have actually, we have different wheat source, we have different milling process. And on this slide, when I showed you actually uh, when we show the all the how we were analyzing the year, how we were validating the protocol, and actually yes, we check it with different uh, flower source, Argentina, France, and we got the results. And these results were so different, but the all the results they were repeatable and reproducible. So my my answer to this question, of course, absolutely. Do you have any other questions? I can see that no. Don't worry, you can, as I said, you can always contact us at sales.com or contact directly me or my colleagues if you have much more questions. You will have after the questions. And I also want to mention that you will have this recording session of the webinar later during the week. So thank you a lot for this uh, webinar. Thank you a lot for participating with us. We hope to see you uh, sooner in our uh, another session of the MIDI Specialist. So I'm um, again, thank you and see you, see you later.